Pastor of Franklin Avenue Baptist Church in New Orleans, Louisiana. He has served that church for about 25 years, and under his leadership, it has grown from a handful of folks to a membership of about 7,000. And God has blessed the ministry of this man in an amazing way. Uh, it's impressive to have a man like this on our campus this week. Dr. Luter was the first African American to be appointed to the membership of the Louisiana Baptist Convention Executive Committee. He's had the distinct honor of serving on the committee that revised the confession that we use as a denomination, the Baptist Faith and Message 2000. And he's right now poised to be the first African American to serve as the president of the largest Protestant denomination in North America, the Southern Baptist Convention. It is an honor to have this man here. Although we could go on and on for a long, long time about all of his accolades, one of the things I appreciate about him is his great humility and his desire to make sure that all glory goes to God. In fact, one of his mottos is, it's not about the pastor, it's about the master. And we are grateful that God is being glorified in the faithful service and fruitful ministry of this man of God. Would you join me in praying with him as he prepares to come and preach to us in just a few moments? Dear Lord, thank you for this dear Christian brother. The way you've used him through thick and through thin, in good times and bad times, to minister to the people of New Orleans, Louisiana. Lord, we are excited about the new avenues of ministry that you're opening up for him, and we pray that in all things he would be faithful. Lord, I pray that today you would use this man to proclaim your word accurately and reverently and powerfully.
powerfully. I pray that the Son would be glorified, that the saints would be edified, and that the lost would be evangelized so that they bow the knee to Jesus Christ as God, Savior, and King. Lord, manifest your presence here among us today. In Jesus' name, amen.
Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Dr. Gilbert, God bless you, amen. So if you was at Franklin Avenue, we'd have y'all to sing that again, amen. We'd just have y'all to sing that. Wasn't that awesome, amen. Let's thank the Lord again for this choir. Wow. I can't sing, but I love good singing, amen. And we've heard some great singing here uh, this week in chapel. Well, uh, this is my last day uh, with you, and uh, closing in the, out this time, I again want to uh, give obedience to God my Father, Jesus Christ, who is the Lord and Savior of my life. Uh, to the wonderful president, Dr. Aguilar, thank you again, sir, for your hospitality and for your friendship and your prayers for me uh, uh, during not only this my week here, but uh, these coming weeks ahead. Appreciate your words of counsel to me, sir, and thank you for your friendship, and I thank you for allowing me to be here again these three days. So, Dr. Smith, Dean of Chapel, thank you, sir, for uh, choosing me to be here this week. I know Dr. Smith knows a lot of pastors and preachers across this city, state, and nation. I could have been here these three days of campus revival, but I'm so honored, my brother, that you thought enough of this street preacher from New Orleans, Louisiana, uh, uh, to allow me to be here. I have been blessed tremendously uh, by uh, being here at the campus of L. See this week. Dr. Quarles, thank you, sir, for that tremendous prayer and introduction and the book and the hospitality and friendship uh, uh, from you. Thank you for just uh, being there for me, and I uh, thank you so very much to you and your family and to all the other faculty and staff uh, uh, who's here and uh, uh, all the students. Thank you so very much for uh, your encouragement and your support, and I just trust and pray that uh, something I've said this week have uh, challenged you, have uh, convicted you, but most of all, I have encouraged you to be the, uh, the person, the child of God, the man of God, the woman of God that God has called us to be. Uh, I thank God for being able to preach revival. I believe in revival. I believe that we all need uh, uh, to be revived. And if revival is going to happen, we've got to apply the Word of God to our lives. That's why on uh, Tuesday we preached about uh, from, Philippi, from, from the book of Philippians about let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. The importance of having a renewed mind. If you're going to be revived and restored and renewed and resurrected and be all that God wants you to be, you must have a renewed mind. On yesterday in God's Word, we looked at a very tough, tough, tough sermon because uh, it's something that we're not comfortable with, not something we like to do, but we talked about the importance of genuine forgiveness. Forgiveness will stop you, unforgiveness will stop you from being what you need to be in God. Uh, God said, listen, don't even come and pray at the altar. If, you're, if, if you know you have an art against a brother or a sister, get that thing straight with your brother and then come and talk to me. So I trust and pray that uh, yesterday's message, as many of you came up to me and uh, shared about how that message help you about genuine forgiveness because forgiveness is not easy however it is a head decision it is a heart decision and it is a healing decision so you can be all that God wants you to be now to wrap these messages up this morning turn to Psalms 119 Psalms 119 in the Old Testament Psalms 119 I want you to look at with me verses 9 to 16 uh, of this psalm, Psalms 119. If we're going to be able to put all this off that we've talked about this week, and the those here from Kingsville that we preach about every night at Kingsville, if we're going to uh, put all this off, we got to apply the word of God to our lives. It's not just you can't just be hearers of the word; you must be doers of the word, and you must understand where your victory is at. Psalms 119. Look at verses 9 through 16 of this psalm. Psalms 119 verses 9 through 16. If you have it, please say amen. amen. How can a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed according to your word. With my whole heart I have sought you. Oh, let me not wander from your commandments. Your word have I hidden in my heart that I might not sin against you. Blessed are you, mm, O Lord. Teach me your statutes. With my lips I have declared all the judgments of your mouth. I have rejoiced in the way of your testimonies as much as in all your riches. I will meditate on your precepts and contemplate your ways. I will delight myself in your statutes. I will not forget your word. Our Father and our God, Master, we thank you and we praise you for this tremendous privilege 
this wonderful opportunity you've given me and Elizabeth God to be here once again on the campus of Louisiana College. Thank you for this president. Thank you for the faculty, the staff. Thank you for the students, God, that make up this tremendous institution. Now, God, we thank you for Dr. Gilbert and this, and this marvelous music ministry. Thank you, Lord, for allowing them to bless our heart each and every day, God, before the word is preached, God. Pray that you will continue to use them in a mighty way. Now, God, once again, God, as I ask every time I preach a word, God, hide me behind the cross. God, let them not see Fred, but God, let them see Christ. To the end, God, that you may be glorified, the saints of God may be edified, Satan may be horrified, and all sinners will come to repentance. Therefore, God, stand in my body, think with my mind, speak with my voice. I'll be so very careful, God, to give your name all the praise, the glory, and the honor. In Jesus' name we pray and for us say again, let the people of God say amen. How can a young man cleanse his way by taking heed according to your word? With this text in mind and closing out these series of messages, I want to preach this morning from the subject, victory through the word. Victory through the word. Dr. Pounds, a Christian life is not a piece of cake. Dr. Sir said a Christian life is not a cakewalk. Uh, that quote, the Christian life is not easy. From the moment you make a commitment to God, uh, ladies, from the day that you accept Christ into your life, brothers, from the hour that you become born again, your life, Pastor Phillips, your, your life is under constant attack from Satan, from Lucifer, from the devil and his host of imps. The Bible, young people, calls this spiritual warfare. The flesh versus the spirit. Bad versus good. Wrong versus right. Dark versus light. The old nature versus your new nature. The day that you become born again, the moment you give your life to Christ, the day you accept Jesus into your life, your life is under constant attack from Satan, from Lucifer, and the devil and all his imps. And that's what you need to understand about spiritual warfare. Every day of your life as a believer, you will face this warfare. The flesh versus the the spirit bad versus good wrong versus right dark versus light the old nature versus your new nature one of the greatest believers who ever walked this earth the apostle paul in Romans chapter 7, Dr. Smith talks about this warfare that we as believers deal with. Romans 7, verses 15 through 24. Paul, in essence, said, Listen, stuff I shouldn't do, that's the stuff I do. Places I shouldn't go, those are the places I go. Things I shouldn't watch, that's the stuff I watch. Things I shouldn't do, that's the stuff I do. Paul said, I find within me a war that every time I attempt to do good, Dr. Trump, evil is right there. In other words, the Apostle Paul says that every now and then our Christian life would be, feel like it's a big roller coaster ride ups and downs, ups and downs, uh, highs and lows. And many of us, uh, if we're honest with ourselves, uh, can identify with the Apostle Paul. Been there, been there, done that, got the t-shirts. All of us, if we're honest with ourselves, have experience in your walk with God. Highs and lows, ups and downs, good days and bad days. One day I feel like, one day I'm Jekyll, the other day I'm Hyde. Uh, one day I'm in the choir, the next day I'm in the club. Just keeping it real, just keeping it real. One day I'm high on the big rock, the other day I'm high on the little rock. Uh, one day I'm in the church, uh, the next day I'm in the casino. One day I'm lifting up Jesus, the other day I'm lifting up Jay-Z. Uh, one day I'm lifting up gospel music, the other day I'm lifting up gangster music. One day I'm uh, uh, praying to the Lord, uh, the other day I'm praying to the lottery. One day I'm into the Bible, the other day I'm into Beyonce. One day I'm into the ministry, the other day I'm into mess. Uh, one day I'm into worship, the other day I'm into word, to the world. Uh, one one day my lips are shouting praise, and the other day my lips are shouting profanity. In other words, in this Christian walk, sometimes I feel like a nut, and sometimes I don't. Oh, some of y'all can identify with that. I'm, I'm, I'm glad you're being honest this morning. I'm glad you're being honest. However, brother, what can free us, Dr. Pond family, from this mess? What, 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 can, what can deliver us, young people, from this madness? What can heal us from this daily struggle, Dr. Aguilar, in our lives to do the right thing, Dr. Aguilar, as sons and daughters of God? Well, some of them ask, well, Fred, uh, 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 what are my options? What, 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 what are my choices? Uh, since you talked about choices the other day, uh, what are my options? Uh, some 12-step uh, program? No. 
Some Alcohol Anonymous meeting? No. Some Gamblers Anonymous meeting? No. Some Anger Management meeting? No. Some Psychic Reader? No. Uh, Dear Abbott? No. Dr. Phil? No. Dr. Oz? No. Ellen? Hope not? No. Dear Abby, no. Uh, 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 Dr. Phil, uh, uh, Dear Abby, uh, Oprah, no. Jerry Springer, are you kidding me? Monique, no. Wendy Williams, how you doing? How you doing? H how you doing? No, 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 my friend. If you really want to do better, if you really want to be free from your fears, if you want to have deliverance from your doubts, healing from your hurts, if you want to strive and thrive and be revived, uh, then your victory, brothers, your victory, sister, your victory on people must be in the Word of God. That's how you're going to do it. And that's the purpose of Psalms 119. That's the reason this book, I believe, is in the Bible. That's the purpose of Psalm 119. It's the longest book in the Bible, and, 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 and that's the reason that the Word of God is mentioned over 184 times in this one psalm. Think about this. Over 184 times in this one chapter, the Word of God is mentioned over 184 times. Imagine that, 184 times in 176 verses, the writer describes the Word of God. Count them for yourself. 11 times he uses the word way. 21 times he says precepts. Another 21 times he says statues. 22 times he says testimony. Not about another 22 times he describes the word as commandments. 23 times he says judgment. Another 25 times he describes the word as the law. 39 times he says the word itself. Over 184 times, Allison, the writer mentions the word of God. My brothers and my sisters, why would you want anything else? Why would you use anything else? Why would you need anything else? You have God's words, uh, you have God's ways, uh, you have God's precepts, you have God's statutes, you have God's testimonies, you have God's commandments, you have God's law, you have everything that you need in life to live a victorious life for the Lord. So how do we as believers pull this thing out? How should we as believers use Psalms 119? How should we as believers uh, use Psalm 119 to be a daily part of our lives? How could Psalms 119 help us to be more consistent, listen to me well, help us to be more consistent in our walk with God to live more victoriously on a daily basis? Well, I'm kind of glad you had, y'all got some good questions here. I'm kind of glad I'm here there, Elsie. Kind of frees me up uh, to give you an answer. Our answer is found right here. In Psalms 119, the psalmist will tell you that if you want to live victorious, brothers, ladies, if you want to pull this thing off, if you want to be light in a dark world and salt in a low sodium society, there are three things that you must do if you're going to pull this thing off called victorious living. So three things I want to give you real quickly as we hurry along in the Word of God. If you're going to pull this thing off and allow this revival happen on this campus, not to be something that you're just going through, but something you can apply to your life. First of all, if you're going to, walk, if you're going to be victorious in God, number one, you need the Word of God in your hand. You need the Word of God in your hand. Look at verse 9 of Psalms 119. The Bible says, the Word of God says, How can a young man cleanse his way? by taking heed according uh, to your word. My friend, oftentimes your victory is right in your hand. L ladies, your victory is right in your hand. The psalmist asked the question, Dr. Smith, how can a young man, how can a young man, how can a person, a young person cleanse his way? By reading Ebony Magazine? By reading, no, Jet Magazine, no, Vibe Magazine, S Oh, I forgot where I'm at. I thought I was at home. Uh, People Magazine, uh, uh, Newsweek Magazine, uh, uh, Time Magazine, uh, Reader's Digest Magazine, uh, National Ge Geographic Magazine. Uh, no, 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 no. Am I responsible? But no, the way you will cleanse your way is by taking heed uh, to the Word of God. Now, in order to take heed, you must read the Word of God. And, and in order to read the Word of God, you must open the Word of God. And in order to open the Word of God, you need the Word of God. 
of God in your hand. If it's going to do you any good, uh, it's not going to do you any good on the coffee table, on the dresser, in your dorm room, uh, in your car. Ladies and gentlemen, if the word of God is going to give you victory, you need the word of God uh, in your hand. When you come to worship, you should have uh, the word of God. When you go to Sunday school, you should have uh, the word of God. When you go to Bible study, you should have uh, the word of God. When you come to chapel, you should have the word of God uh, in your hand, whether it's a Bible like this or whether it's in your phone. You got so many apps on your iPhone and your smartphone. Why don't you download the word of God so you can always have uh, the word of God in your hand? We need, we need the word of God. Brothers, the word of God is your sword. Ladies, the word of God is your sword. The Bible say it's part that cause of our armor. You, you, it's part of your spiritual armor by taking the word of God in your hand. Listen, brothers, listen, ladies, listen, young people, you are about to go into battle. You're about to go into warfare. You're about to be attacked by the enemy. Where is your sword? Your marriage is being attacked. Where's your sword? Your kids are being attacked. Where's your sword? Your mind is being attacked. Where's your sword? Your single life is being attacked. Where's your sword? Your hormones, your hormones, your hormones are being attacked. Where's your sword? Your finances are being attacked. Where's your sword? Your testimony is being attacked. Where's your sword? Your ministry is being attacked. Where's your sword? As God told Moses, as he and the children of Israel were at the brink of the Red Sea, Found behind them, mountains on both sides. Uh, and they said, Lord, what are we going to do? And God said, Moses, what do you have in your hand? Use what you have in your hand. Uh, and like manner, my brothers and my sisters, that's what I'm saying to those of you here this morning at Louisiana College. When you're on the brink of your breakthrough, when you're on the brink of your miracle, when you're on the brink of your victory, when you're about to start your career or start your ministry and start your future, yes, you need all the other things that you're learning here at LC. But if you're going to be what you need, me for God you need the Word of God oh brothers and my sisters don't leave LC without the Word of God in your hand you need it in order to be victorious in your walk with God but then there's a second thing in the text if we're going to be victorious in God Dr. Robinson if we're going to pull this thing off back upon family if we're going to be all that God has called us to be that kill Gilbert, we're going to be with who God has called us. But not only do you need the word of God in your hand, young people, but secondly, according to the text, you need the word of God in your head. Not only do you need it in your hand, but you need the word of God in your head. Look at verses 15 and 16 of Psalms 119. The Bible says, the word of God says, I will meditate on your precepts and contemplate your ways. I will delight myself in your statues. I will not forget your word. Young people, you need it not only in your hand. Dr. Smith, we also need the word of God in our head. Notice the words the psalmist uses. Young people, in these two verses. He said, I will meditate. I will contemplate. I will not forget. Meditate to think deeply. Contemplate to think about intently. Not forget to remember. My friend, it's no wonder that the enemy comes against our mind so much. It's no wonder that the enemy comes against our thoughts so much because if he can get us to do anything uh, to keep our minds off the word of God, he knows we can, he can keep us from being victorious. Think about it. How many times this week, even for chapel, even for revival. How many times this week you sat down to read your Bible? You sat down for your quiet time. You sat down to read the scripture, to, 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 to read the word of God. You sat down to study the word of God. You sat down to memorize the word. You sat down and just to take time in the word. And all kind of thoughts came in your mind. You said, where that came from? You and some other brother. You and some other sister. You involved in this and you involved in that and, 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 and stuff that was sinful, stuff that was wrong. And, and you're sitting down to read the word of God. And you say, how in the world, how, where in the world did that come from? Brothers, you need to understand that if the enemy is coming against your mind, Satan knows that if he can control your mind, he can control your body. Thank you for that one amen. I appreciate that. The enemy knows young people. If he can control your mind, he can control your body. 
A crack addict don't have to see the crack. They just got to think about it. Alcoholic don't have to see the alcohol. They just got to think about it. Drug addict don't have to see the drug. They just got to think about it. A Krispy Kreme freak don't have to see the Krispy Kreme. just got to think about it. And I'm off to the Krispy Kreme donut place. If the enemy can get your mind to think it, he can get your body to do it. That's why Paul says in Philippians chapter 4 and verse 8, Dr. Pouncey said, whatever things are true, I tell you, whatever things are honest, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are good report, look what he says. He says, think on these things. Uh, uh, meditate on these things. Contemplate on these things. Don't forget these things. My friend, don't let the enemy, don't let the devil get to your head. That's when he gets us. And I can tell you, I can call testimonies in here this morning who can testify that when the enemy gets to your mind, that's when he got you. Adam and Eve were doing pretty good in the Garden of Eden so the enemy got to their head. Moses was doing pretty good uh, uh, following God's direction until the enemy got to his head. Uh, Noah was doing pretty good uh, in obeying God until the enemy got to his head. David was doing pretty good uh, until the enemy got to his head. Some of y'all remember what happened to David, right? Bathsheba, brick house, baby got back, shaking it fast. You know, for, you know y'all remember that. He was doing pretty good until the enemy got to his head. Peter was doing pretty good till the enemy got to his head. Judas was one of the hand-picked 12 disciples until the enemy got to his head and convinced him to betray our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. But not only them, right here in this chapel, you and I were doing pretty good till the enemy got to our head. And then we found ourselves doing stuff we know we shouldn't do, going places we know we should not have gone, Saying stuff we know we should not have said. Brothers and sisters, until the enemy, uh, 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 you, uh, until you allow the word of God to be in your hand, the enemy will come against you with everything he can. That's why church folk are so fickle. That's why we're so funny. One moment we're happy, the next moment we're sad. One moment we're glad, the next moment we're mad. One moment we're, re we're rejoicing, the next moment we're remorsing. One moment we're acting like a saint, Next moment, we're acting like a sinner. How can we do better? How can we act better? How can we be more consistent? How can we, on a regular basis, live a more consistent life? Well, my friend, you need the Word of God in your head so you can think right so you can talk right, so you can walk right, so you can sing right, so you can preach right, so you can serve right, so you can live right for God. That's why the Apostle Paul said in Philippians chapter 2 and verse 5, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, if you're going to thrive in your walk with God, if you're going to strive in your walk with God, if you're going to be revived and renewed and resurrected and regenerated, as a result of what's going on here on campus this week, if you're going to be victorious with the Word of God throughout your life, not only here on LC campus, but when you leave this campus in your ministry, in your career, in your life, you need the Word of God in your hand. You need the Word of God in your head. And then finally, you need the Word of God in your heart. You need the Word of God in your heart. Look at verse 11 as we come to a close. Your Word... Your word, your word have I hidden in my heart. Your word have I hidden in my heart that I might not sin against you. Oh, my friend, thank God you've got the word in your, head, in your hand. Thank God you've got the word in your head. But if you really want to be victorious, if you really want to live for God, if you want to thrive and strive and be revived, you must have the Word of God in your heart. Listen, to have the Word of God in your heart is the believer's best weapon to defend against sin. You've got to have it in your heart. Again, look at the text. Your word have I hidden in my heart that I might not sin against thee. You may be rushing and forget the Bible in your hand. You may be stressed out and forget the Bible in your head. But oh, if you got the Word of God in your heart, 
You got the word of God. You shall, you shall, you shall be able to stand. Oh, my friend, think about it. Whatever you need to live victorious for God, it's in uh, the word of God because it's in your heart. Love, it's in your heart. Peace, it's in your heart. Joy, it's in your heart. Contentment, forgiveness, long-suffering, uh, it's in your heart. Kindness and goodness, uh, it's in your heart. Faith uh, and gentleness and self-control, uh, it's in your heart. God's law, God's testimony, God's way, God's promises, God's precepts, God's statutes, God's commandments, God's judgment, God's word uh, is in your heart. Why? That I might not sin, uh, that I might not mess up, that I might not fall, uh, that I might not sin against thee. Oh, I don't know about you, LC, but that sound like victory. That sound like victory. That sound like victory. Victory that comes through the word of God. Oh, brothers and sisters. And I encourage you today that if you're going to have victory, you got to have the word of God in your hand and your head and in your heart. So come on, brothers. Come on, sisters. Come on, faculty. Come on, staff. Come on, brothers. Come on, sir. Come on, students. Come on, school. You need the word of God in your hand. You need the word of God in your head. And you need the word of God in your heart. Then and only then can you say like the songwriter, victory. Victory is mine. Victory is mine. Victory today is mine. I told Satan just the other day, get, get, get behind me because victory today is mine. And it's all because you have the word of God in your hand, your head, and in your heart. I get out when I was growing up and even to this day, I, I love action movies. I, I love action movies. And one of my favorite series of action movies and one of my favorite characters in action movies is James Bond 007. Anybody ever saw any James Bond 007? I, I see that James Bond fan. I, I, man, I, I, James, he's so cool. You know, so, he's so collected. You know, you go to a place and say, what's your name? Say, Bond. James Bond. Oh, bro, just, I mean, the, the, the brother was so cool. And, but, but I always wondered, Dr. Pounds, how James Bond always got out of all the stuff that he would get into. Y'all seen the movie. I was watching one of the James Bond films one time, and man, he was fighting in his airplane with some uh, dudes, man, and, 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 and they opened up the door, and they threw James Bond out the, out the airplane, and he didn't have a parachute. I said, oh, no, this is it. This is the last James Bond movie. It's over for James Bond. It's here over. But somewhere, somehow, Dr. Cross, he would pull on his coat, and his coat became a parachute. I I said, how did he do that? I remember one time, a doctor said he, he was fighting on this yacht in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. I mean, water everywhere. He was fighting with these old big old ugly dudes, and James Bond was getting back. But then they got the best James, they threw James over the boat. Hey, man, he didn't have a, any action. I said, oh, no, that's it. Last James Bond movie, Earth, Earth, as Ashes, Dust to Dust. This is it. No more sequels. No, no more sequels. No more sequels. This is it. Uh, uh, but just that I thought it was over, Jane Bond pulled on his tie, and his tie became oxygen. I said, how in the world, Fred, did he do that? And one of my favorite uh, 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 was, was, was in, in, in the movie uh, uh, Goldfinger, when he was fighting that big old ugly dude with the gold teeth in his mouth. Man, y'all, big old ugly dude. There. And they had Jane Bond on this salt, and they were about to salt Jane Bond up. I said, oh, no, this is it. No more Jane Bond movie. It never will happen again. Uh, this is it. But somewhere, somehow, Jane Bond was able to turn his arm, uh, and his watch became uh, 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 some kind of a laser, and the laser cut the rope. And I said, how in the world did he do that? How did, did he get out of all the stuff that he got in? And so one day, Dr. Cross, I was watching TV. I was just uh, uh, searching the channels as me and Wiz men like to search, you know, uh, 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 Oprah channel. No, indeed. Lifetime channel. Get out of here. No way in the world. And I came across the history channel in Fleming's, the making of James Bond. I said, oh! I told him, all right, this is it. I said, baby, hold my calls. Don't, I'm not home or don't let in there. I'm going to finally see how James Bond was able to get out all the stuff that he got out. And I was 10. I, was, I watched that thing for a whole hour. And you know what I found out after that hour? I, I mean, it's just going to blow you. You, you, know, you know how I found out? You know how James, he was thrown off that airplane and his coat became a parachute? And when he was thrown out of that boat and, and his tie became oxygen? And then he was on, that, 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 uh, on Goldfinger and, and his watch became laser? You, you know what I found out? You, you, you know how all that happened? Come blow your way. It was written in the script that way. <laughs> it was in the script that way. 
I've got to go to my seat, Elsie. Thank you for letting me be here, Doc. But you know why I know we're going to be victorious? It's in the script. It's in the script. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. It's in the script. I'll keep you in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee because they trust uh, in the Lord. Uh, it's in the script. Uh, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers them uh, out of them all. Uh, it's in the script. Uh, I have been young, but now I'm old, but I've never, ever seen the righteous forsaken nor his seed uh, begging bread. Uh, it's in the script. Uh, what shall separate me uh, from the love of God shall trust Tribulation, no, shall distress, no, shall hide, no, shall dead, no. I'll let nothing separate me from the love of God. It's in the script. I can do all things through Christ that give me the strength. It's in the script. You're going to make it. 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 Because they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not get weary. They shall walk and not faint. It's in the square. God bless you. God bless you. And God keep you. It's in the script. Yes. 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 Yes.